Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember, check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med search mastery courses. Plus, and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. Now for the big guns, for the superbugs, known for their very toxic effects, killing the kidneys and the ears. So we have two classes of drugs which kill the two kidneys and ears when they're toxic. First is the glycopeptides class, including vancomycin, which we can think is very toxic. And we also have aminoglycoside class, including tobramycin, gentamicin, and neomycin. Now again, both these guys end in myosin, so think it's my sin to give a myosin, since they're super toxic to the ear and kidneys. And the main thing is to monitor the drug concentration in the blood. Again, remember, too high and the kidneys die, and too low, the infection grows. So the key words to know for the exam is peaks and troughs always checking 15 to 30 minutes before the next dose or before the next administration. Guys, we always draw and review the levels. The range must be between 10 and 20 to be in therapeutic range. Again, guys, too high, the kidneys will die. So we always report and hold over 20. And we're reporting signs of toxicity, ear damage known as ototoxicity, so we're monitoring for hearing and balance changes. Again, the NCLEX keywords here is vertigo, or loss of balance, and even ataxia, the inability to walk. And also tinnitus, or ringing of the ears. Usually these are the first indications of kidney toxicity. Now speaking of kidney damage, nephrotoxicity, mentioned over and over in many quiz banks. Guys, we're reporting and notifying the HCP of increasing BUN and creatinine. So creatinine over 1.3 means bad kidney. And BUN over 20 is definitely not good. And lastly guys, urine output 30 mLs per hour or less usually means the kidneys are in distress. Now specific to vancomycin, given for very serious infections like MRSA and C. diff in the gut. Guys, these bugs are hard to kill, so Venko is some pretty powerful stuff, and consequently, it burns during administration. So nursing considerations, think Venko burns the veins causing thrombophobitis. Or Venko is very irritating to tissues, so it's usually given via pick line as preferred route. So the key point is to assess the site every 30 minutes for pain, redness, and swelling. Guys, make sure the IV is working and patent before administration. Now the next big key term is red man syndrome, caused by rapid infusion. Now this is when we have a sudden onset of severe hypotension or low blood pressure, flushing and pruritus, basically itching, and a big red rash on the face, neck, chest, and extremities. Again, it's not an allergic reaction, so red man's is from a rapid infusion. So simply slow the infusion. So once again, the key words is monitor blood pressure, guys. That's the biggest priority. And infuse slowly at least over 60 minutes. Remember, fast infusion means flushing. Now the NCLEX wants you to be a safe nurse and wants you to know the difference between the common red man syndrome and the deadly anaphylactic allergic reaction. So guys, the key words to look for for anaphylaxis is write these down. Hives, angioedema, and wheezing. Guys, any respiratory distress or sign and symptom. Guys, this is not red man syndrome. This is a very serious allergy. So immediately stop the infusion and administer epinephrine. So remember the acronym EPI for when to administer epinephrine. E for edema or angioedema, P for paritis and hives, and I for inspiratory and expiratory wheezes. Now lastly, don't get tricked on the NCLEX. Vancomycin does not affect magnesium levels. So there's no effect on mental status or DTRs. This is usually magnesium. And there's no effect on nausea vomiting like most antibiotics. So there's no need for anti-nausea meds. 
Now, as far as aminoglycosides, the indication is used to treat infections in cystic fibrosis. And it's different than vancomycin in that there's no red man syndrome. And its mode of action is a little bit different in that it blocks the synthesis of bacteria to stop the bacterial growth. But guys, the NCLEX does not focus on this. It rather focuses on ways that the drug can harm the patient. So for toxic effects, the key point here is that it's very toxic in combination with vancomycin. So ear toxicity as well as kidney toxicity, aka ototoxic and nephrotoxic. You may need to stop the medication to prevent deafness. So guys, always notify the HCP of increasing BUN and creatinine. The key word here is increasing. So you have to know your kidney numbers. And guys, we have an increased risk for toxic effects in the elderly populations, as well as those with decreased renal function, as well as when giving in high doses. Now, a common distractor on most select all that apply questions is the normal effect of muscle aches and cramping. Now, it's contraindicated in patients with neuromuscular diseases, but for patients without the disease, guys, it's a normal finding. So there's no need to report or notify and no need to stop the infusion. This is a very common mistake most students make on exit exams as well as the NCLEX. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.